It's a completely alien world. When you go below the ice, down into the world below, the water is, is gin clear. This really remarkable and beautiful ice landscape, just shards and sculptures of ice. And even the sounds that you hear as well just kind of add to that. And you, you do feel like you've visited another planet. I'm Catherine Jeffs and I was down in Antarctica uh, for the original Frozen Planet series filming for my winter episode. It was really important for us to be able to show how incredibly harsh the existence is from our perspective. But actually what's really interesting is that below the ice in, in Antarctica are these incredible communities and for them of course it's, it's incredibly normal, that's exactly what they've evolved to live in. The communities are so rich and so vibrant, so completely alien to our world. There was actually very, very little research out there on, on Antarctica, comparatively to say going and filming in a, in a tropical jungle. But I'd found this paper from the 1970s, a dusty old paper, and, um, and it mentioned these things called brinicles. And, and I was really fascinated. It said that there were these ice formations that grew down from the, 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 the ice, from the surface ice, uh, remarkably quickly, but no one had really seen the growth of them. And I thought, my God, you know, we could film, we, we're going down there to attempt to film uh, time lapses of these invertebrate animals that are walking and moving quite slowly. If we could capture the, the brinicle growth, that would be really, that could be quite interesting. I think it's one of the most challenging places that I have ever directed a shoot. The contrast between above the ice in Antarctica, where of course it's like bleak and ancient ice is being swept by snow. When you go below the ice, you sort of drop down this drilled hole down into the world below. All of a sudden you're sort of looking out on this incredible vista. The water is gin clear and you can see for hundreds of meters this really remarkable and beautiful ice landscape, um, just shards and sculptures of ice and populated by these really vibrantly coloured, fascinating and often quite large animals. It's a completely alien world. And even the sounds that you hear as well just kind of add to that because you can hear the chinking of the ice and you, you do feel like you visited another planet. I was for the most part up on the top um, kind of being the dive supervisor and the director, the cameramen, Hugh Miller and Doug Anderson, for them it was incredibly challenging. I mean, they were super, super motivated. This was the most wonderful diving they'd ever done in their lives. But the challenges of it, when they're diving almost minus two degrees Celsius, the cold is just phenomenal. When you go down there, you sort of feel it numb your face and sting your face. It takes your breath away. But also the knowledge there is this immense plate that goes on forever and ever and ever of eight feet thick ice above you. And there is just one tiny, tiny little hole that gives you access back to your world. And you really feel that when you go down, there is definitely that, that sense of tr trepidation and incredible nervousness if something were to go wrong. So I'd be up there in the diver and everything would be you know, very, very quiet. Uh, and then all of a sudden you'd hear this kind of like big sort of snort and splash as the, the Weddell seal would pop up to visit in the in the hole and they would sort of like blink at you. They weren't nervous at all because uh, the dive hut was so warm and so for them this was just like this like balmy holiday. They'd be coming up and breathing this warm air. So it would be quite sweet to sort of sit alongside them and just stare into these huge big eyes and, and look at their sort of little frosted whiskers. But there is a constant danger here. Swirling patterns in the water reveal its presence. They're made by brine, super concentrated salt water. It's a warning. I do remember the day that they, they were down there filming the Weddell seals interacting and all of a sudden they came back and they were trying to talk to me. And you're so cold when you come off these dives that your lips are all numb and you can't really talk. And so I'm kind of like helping them out with their kit and they're taking their kit off and I'm seeing their eyes, something exciting had happened. Their control came back to the mouth and they were like, Brian And I was like, 
Bridical. And so that night, you know, we could have like skidooed back to the to the base. So you had having had a day of you know whole, the whole day of diving in this like incredible conditions, was straight into the lab. Crates were opened. All the stuff was everywhere across the lab, and he was just like soldering all night and looking at his diagrams. Of, you know, and, and I was sort of standing over him going, have you finished yet? Have you finished yet? And so he was just working all night to create this, this time-lapse kit and, and link it up and just see whether it was going to work. It was all guesswork as to what might happen. They could see where the brinicle was coming down, but they had never, they'd never really witnessed, you know, kind of really what happens. We also knew that there was a melt pool quite drastically forming above where we were working. Every day, the sun, sun's influence was getting more and more. The surface of the ice in some areas, especially areas, say, where the, the ice was that little bit thinner, we were starting to see uh, formations of kind of like puddles of melted water. And so you never knew whether that was going to break through and all of a sudden that ceiling of ice that we'd been working underneath would be gone. So we felt that there was probably uh, quite a limited amount of time that we might be able to film this. So the, t the clock was ticking. Winter is reaching down from the cold world above. The guys came up utterly exhausted and we set it to run for an eight hour, eight hour time lapse. And we knew we then had to go away and the next day uh, come back to retrieve. And we, we came back and there was a, you know, we were very nervous, you know, would the camera have flooded? Did it work? You know, would we have got the shot? And, um, and the guys came, went down and they came back up and and I knew something had gone wrong. And the Weddell seal had knocked over the camera. So our very, very first time lapse, we didn't get anything apart from all these kind of wonderful, kind of squidgy little Antarctic sea worms moving around on the, on the base. So they had to, to go again. And this time they came up and, and I could tell, you know, there was, there was real excitement. And they were looking at me and they wouldn't really tell me. They, they were like, I was like, did it grow? Did it grow? And they were like, we have to pack, get, retrieve all of the stuff because the melt pool now was really, really forming. If we'd have left it there, could we have got back in again? Would we lose all the kit? I think by the time we got back, it was about one o'clock in the morning. You've now got a very, very tired crew. You know, we've been working a long time and it's very, very cold in conditions. We knew that there was perhaps something very, very special on this camera. And I'll just never forget the, the first time it had downloaded and we opened it up and we literally just gasped and you know our jaws hit the floor because we had never seen anything quite like it and I hope that Hugh doesn't mind me saying but he literally had tears in his eyes I mean it was, it was like that kind of moment because there was just this quite extraordinary bizarre ice formation completely sort of seeming to be alive stretching down towards the sea floor and he'd set up three cameras around this spot that we had, we had no idea if it was going to work. He had no idea if it was going to work. And he had just got it so beautifully right because the bridal just came down through in the wide shot and hit the ground in the close-up. It just moved through and you could just see the, the ice crystals forming. And then on this wide shot, looking at the floor, you could see the, the different invertebrates, the starfish getting caught up in this drama, in this, you know, kind of really quite terrifying field of ice that was forming around them. Sure enough, when we went back the next day, the melt pool had gone through and the entire system had collapsed. And we would have never had another chance to get it. That was it. The invertebrates, the smaller animals, these microcosmic worlds ha have all the dramas of the jungle or the the plains there there are heroes there are dramas unfolding that are just as remarkable the most exciting thing for me being able to capture the brinical is that we have still so much to learn there is always going to be things to discover about the natural world there are places that we've yet to discover there are countless species that we have no idea about yet. Their behaviours, their stories are just waiting out there. And uh, I just hope that we can continue to learn from them and, and continue to be inspired by them as well.